Welcome back to the shop today. We are working on our 2019 Duramax L5P. We do have some new uh, products from Whirly Custom Fab. I did show those to you guys in the unboxing video. So we are gonna be trying to install the three and a half inch high flow intake horn. Um, hopefully we can do a step-by-step -step install, show you guys uh, what the manufacturer recommends and hopefully it's not too difficult. Let's get into it. Okay, so on the bench, we do have the Whirly Custom Fab three and a half inch high flow intake horn kit. Um, this is not with the PCV reroute. I'll touch more on that later. Uh, so you do get the, the horn. I did opt for an illusion purple two coat color option and man, it's beautiful. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick that up there, but it's absolutely slick. Uh, the kit does come with an O-ring supplied as well as two studs. You will not reuse your factory hardware. And I believe these are 13 millimeter bolts. That's what the factory is. Uh, so let's go over what tools that you might need to install this kit. Okay, so I know I say this in every video. I've never done this before. Um, so these are some items that Worley recommends on their website that you use. Um, some that they don't recommend, but I put on the table anyways, just in case. Um, I do have a small pick tool here. It does have a magnet on the end. This is a small quarter inch drive flex head ratchet. Uh, not sure if the flex head is really needed or not. I have a small universal or swivel. Uh, that's a quarter inch drive as well. I have a 13 millimeter shallow, a 13 millimeter deep. It does say in the instructions to use a long quarter inch extension. Um, this is the longest one I have. I'm not sure exactly how long it's supposed to be. I did uh, supply here three shorter ones so we can make whatever length that we need and I have more if we need it. Um, I do have a magnetic tray to put any hardware in. Do have some electrical tape, not sure if we'll need this or not. And I have just some various magnets on a stick. Uh, I do have a shop light there, it's probably gonna be needed. I do have some uh, towels, this are for more than one use. And they do recommend a non-petroleum based uh, grease that you can actually put on the O-ring here to help hold it inside the uh, face of this intake horn here um, to help it hold it still when you're installing. So. Let's get right into it. Let's take this thing apart. Okay, so I did go ahead and uh, disconnect my intake here. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so the part that we're gonna be replacing is actually this intake horn here. Well, there are two pretty challenging bolts to get to. One is right there on the other side of my finger. The other one, hopefully we'll be able to get some close-ups for you guys. It's actually right down in there. So that's the tricky one that everybody keeps talking about um, that I keep hearing about is a, a bear to get off. So let's get right into it. Let's see if we can get you guys set up with some good angles so you can see and uh, hopefully this will come out no problem. Okay, so first we're gonna be trying to tackle that bolt right there. Looks pretty straightforward to get to. I have the long extension with a 13 millimeter. Now one thing that I did do is take some black electrical tape. I do have a swivel underneath here, but that gives it enough ability to kind of move around, but you don't have to worry about it um, moving too much that you can't get it on the bolt and coming loose once you get it done in there. So that's just a little trick I do. Not sure if that's gonna be helpful for you all or not. Okay, so let's see if we can get that 13 millimeter. You know what, before I do that, let me just... Okay, so I did a couple things. I put a bunch of shop, uh, microfiber shop rags down there to make sure once I got it out, I wouldn't lose it. And I also put a little um, piece of shop rag. Where's it at? There's the camera. In the end of my socket there. Hopefully, so once this thing finally breaks free, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't come off of there. Bolt removed. 
change. Okay, so I do have the passenger side bolt out and the driver side one. This is the one that's uh, fairly difficult to get to. Let me see if I can light that up for you guys. So I have a socket all the way down there with the um, black electrical tape on. Let's see it a little bit right there. Uh, so I kind of came in on top of the boot um, or the horn. I tried going underneath uh, the socket I had. might have been a little bit too long. Clearances are pretty tight. I um, have heard you can take your AC compressor and stuff off. I'm going to try to just go in from the top here. So let's see if we can get that on video. So I chewed through a lot of my tapes. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and retape it so I don't. I had to swap up uh, views there because I need to be where the camera was. This uh, is kind of a damn bear. Bolt number two. Bolt number two is pain in the ass. But it's not impossible with hand tools. Um, probably not gonna reposition. Just gonna see if we can. out of here. There's your intake horn removed. Okay, so this is what it looks like with your um, your factory intake horn off. Always want to grab on your wheel there to make sure that it's good you see i do have a little bit of not sure well you guys are gonna be able to see that a little bit of oil down in there i'm gonna go ahead and clean that out once you clean that out we'll install the factory supplied studs with the whirly kit there really are no uh super great angles to film that at but you do have the uh studs here now you will notice that there's a short side to the stud and a long side to the stud. The short side to the stud goes in towards the turbo and only hand tight. I'm gonna make sure that you do not drop these. If you do, you're probably not getting them back. Oh, I hope I don't drop it on video, that would suck. both your studs fully attached. So we can just showcase a couple differences here between the two units. Now we'll say that the uh, the Whirly unit is a little bit shorter. Not exactly sure what the purpose of that is. But as you can see here on the factory unit, it's large and then it necks down there to a smaller opening. Where's the Whirly unit? Huge diameter here. And you can see much more of a straight through design. I do believe they call this a anti-surge valve or an anti-surge ring that's machined in there. That's to uh, keep the turbo from having issues. So let's go ahead and install this O-ring. So I'm gonna take this O-ring and a little bit of assembly lube. Okay, so we do have the studs installed. Do have our O-ring on our intake horn here. I'm gonna try to just uh, snake this right down in here and install it on the studs. Try to be careful. Not to scratch anything. This might not be the best angle for you guys.
can see there. The one over there that's a real pain. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna try to put this, I uh, can't really see it, but the really crappy one on down here first. So I'm gonna put this on time lapse. Now, I did have the intake horn in there and I was fighting with this uh, nut over here. I did not wanna cross thread it for anything. So um, what I did was I unbolted the AC compressor. Now they say that you don't have to do it, and I truly believe that you don't have to do it. Um, to me, it was it was it, pretty easy to do. I mean, it was just four 15 millimeter bolts. You just unbolt them and just scoot it out of the way. You don't even have to disconnect anything. And then look, you have freaking rock star access to your bolts right there. So I, I kind of wish I would have did this in the beginning. All you have to do is just pop your serpentine belt off real quick, and um, then you have good access. So let's get this intake horn back on, and let's get these nuts on, and uh, let's bolt this sucker down. All right, this was a super tricky one that we couldn't get to. Just like that. It reds right on. So while you were, I was taping extensions and Everything else, don't really think. I just think this was the the better way to do it. But oh yeah, that's super simple to get to. Go ahead and tighten the passenger side up. Okay, so you have your whoops, right hand and left hand bolts fully installed. Get shot down out of there to turbo. I'm gonna go ahead and hook back my uh, AC compressor with my four 15 millimeter bolts. And uh, I'm just gonna run that through real quick and not bore you guys with that. Okay, I have the AC compressor bolted back on. I'm just gonna use my uh, half inch ratchet there and we'll put the serpentine belt back on and we'll finish putting everything else together. Okay, so after you have everything back installed, I do have my serpentine belt back on. You're going to uh, reconnect your um, PCV hose here, uh, whether you have it or not. It's gonna depend on what kit you buy. So that's it. The only thing we have left to do is um, actually install our intake tube down to our filter here and then that'll be a full setup. It's kind of a shame it's such a pretty part because it's buried in in there. So now let's start it up. You're not going to be able to tell any difference, uh, honestly, with it just sitting here for sure. You might be able to hear a little bit of a difference after it's uh, after it's moving down the road. But, all in all, and as always, remember to keep your factory parts. Don't ditch this. Uh, this is still good, and keep your factory 13 millimeter bolts. You never know, you might need them again someday. Okay, that wraps up the install for the three and a half inch uh, Whirly intake horn. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And the best part about all these parts is that they are... Made in the USA. Boom, America. I had a uh, subscriber, ex-landscaper. He's got all kinds of awesome stuff done to his L5P. Um, he told me that his Duramax was hungry and ate one of his sockets. And I thought, Ah, that'll never happen to me. 
It absolutely did. Even though I had uh, the first socket taped, I had that 13 millimeter. Um, I put it on to test fit it. When I went to pull it back off, that socket dropped right down. I have no idea where it went. I searched for that thing for probably upwards of 30 minutes. I could not find it. So uh, it is what it is. I looked the best I could. I absolutely could not find it. Search with my magnet on a stick. Could absolutely not find it. So hopefully it doesn't cause any issues. But X Landscaper, you were 100% right, my man. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we are getting really close to 300 subscribers. I think we have like 290. So thank you for everyone um, who's who's been on this journey with us. It's, uh, been a long, long road, but, uh, getting close to 300. I'm actually kind of excited about that. I know it's a small number to a lot of people, but it's pretty cool to me. So thank you for everybody who, uh, tunes in and asks questions and hopefully I've helped some of you guys along the way. And, uh, if I have, you know, uh, don't forget to subscribe, drop a like in that, that box below. I appreciate it till next time. Take care.